Surprising no one, Fortnite and LEGO snap satisfyingly together like a couple of plastic construction bricks. Combining the building creativity of LEGO sets with Fortnite's expansive island playgrounds creates an approachable yet fairly deep survival game. But while it streamlines some of the more cumbersome aspects of the genre, LEGO Fortnite also has the distinct feel of an early access game. There's a solid foundation here that developer Epic Games will surely build on over time, but LEGO Fortnite can feel somewhat empty at launch. What's here is fun, there's just not very much of it. If you're familiar with survival games like Minecraft or Valheim, you'll immediately find yourself at home in Fortnite's riff on the genre, as it uses tried-and-true blueprints rather than starting from scratch. Dropped on a procedurally generated island that's still loosely contained within Fortnite's larger time-loopy fiction, you need to gather resources to keep yourself alive. As you get more materials, you can craft tools and weapons, which let you fight off deadly creatures and gather even better materials. And then make better tools and weapons so you can search for even deadlier creatures and even rarer materials. It's an extremely well-worn track at this point, and LEGO Fortnite makes no attempt to lay down its own rails. Instead of redefining the survival genre, the focus is on reducing friction by providing you with helpful NPCs to lighten the load. While a lot of survival games include cooperative multiplayer, LEGO Fortnite makes cooperation its central theme. You can join up with as many as seven other players, but even if you're alone, you'll have NPCs around to take off a lot of the pressure. It's an adjustment that lets LEGO Fortnite maintain the trappings of survival while relaxing the burden overall. NPCs can lessen the grind that often defines this sort of game, although there's still plenty of grind to go around. From the start of each new game, other characters will hang around to both offer tutorial information and to just help out. Uh -huh. Rather than just building random shelter structures to keep yourself alive, you can construct a town square that turns your location into a village. Visitors will flow in and out of your village freely and defend it from any enemies that happen by and you can entice some of them to become permanent residents by advancing through 10 village levels. That gives you something of a workforce almost from the beginning. You can assign NPCs to forage for materials or work your different crafting benches, providing you with free resources every so often. It's a little like always having other players around to help you, freeing you up somewhat to focus on things that are more enticing than standing at a workbench and waiting for food to cook. The help makes it a little easier to enjoy the best part of LEGO Fortnite, which is striking out into the world to find new resources to improve your stuff. The Fortnite side of the equation adds some interesting wrinkles, like a version of the Battle Royale Storm mode with lightning strikes that will drive you into shelter, llamas and supply drops that dispense random loot, and rifts that spawn little dance parties on clouds, which you can join with your Fortnite emotes. There's not a ton beyond that stuff and some recognizable skins to identify this as a Fortnite spin-off, but the additions still bring some extra flavor to the world and open the door for future possibilities. Combat is the same clunky style as Minecraft or Valheim, where you mostly stand and whack at enemies with a sword between blocking their assaults with a shield, with a dodge roll that gives you a little extra agility when you need it. LEGO Fortnite uses NPCs to lower the stakes a bit here, too, as you can recruit any friendly character to explore with you, instantly doubling your odds in a fight. If they die, NPCs respawn a few seconds later, barely any worse for wear. Bringing an AI buddy along maintains the feel of adventuring while bringing down the barrier of entry and the risk. If you do die, as is typical in the genre, whatever you were carrying is dropped at that spot and you have to set out to retrieve it. Even if you're alone though, it's usually pretty trivial to venture to any spot where you previously fell, 
thanks to the fact that LEGO Fortnite maps feel big without being enormous. Special equipment pieces that improve your health and resilience or enhance your mobility, like an extremely useful glider, stick with your character even after you die, which also means you're not completely helpless on respawning. It all contributes to a chill vibe that permeates throughout LEGO Fortnite. There are challenges in the world, but they're never so much that you're dreading a corpse run or annoyed when a fight goes poorly. However, the more time I spent exploring the world, the more I realized there isn't really much out there yet. There are no real goals other than grinding up the tech tree and improving your village. And as is often the case, you'll need to upgrade your stuff fully in one biome before you have the tools that will let you survive in the next. The three main biomes, the grasslands, a desert called Dry Valley, and the snowy mountains known as the Frostlands, have their own features and styles but there's little to find within them except the next kind of tree to cut or rock to mine. That's also true even when you delve into their often deep and somewhat spooky caves. That meant I got out almost entirely what I put in when it came to fun. LEGO Fortnite lacks the high stakes and frightening adventures of something like Valheim, where new biomes become drastically more deadly and sailing the seas brings surprising new sights and dangers. There's also no story or hidden mystery like in Grounded or Sons of the Forest to drive you to see what you might find. There's a cool world here, but right now it's fairly empty. The LEGO side of things informs all the building aspects, and it's the other major area where LEGO Fortnite sets itself apart. As in other survival games, constantly foraging for new materials unlocks different building pieces that let you construct things like houses, protective walls, and watchtowers. You can build freely by snapping pieces together as you like, but there are also pre-built structures you can create from blueprints you unlock automatically as you progress. These just let you plug in the right materials to create elaborate, neat-looking structures, allowing anyone to make aesthetically pleasing and functional villages regardless of their skill level as a builder. The blueprints are another way LEGO Fortnite eases some of the traditionally grating elements of survival games, offering you ways to make great-looking dwellings with less time investment if you so choose. There's also a creative mode that lets you forego the survival aspects in favor of unfettered construction, and the combination of blueprints and free building opens up new possibilities, allowing you to use cool pre-builds as a starting point for your own ideas. It's great to have both the option to let creativity flow and the ability to make excellent settlements without much trouble, but LEGO Fortnite is also somewhat thin in the building department. In addition to the pieces you need for structures, you can also cobble together special foundations, wheels, and balloons to make vehicles, which are pretty instantly hilarious. The system offers the same goofy building freedom that made The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom so much fun to mess around in. Or it might in the future, when there's more to it. You can fashion land vehicles or hot air balloons with rocket thrusters, but there are only a few pieces dedicated to the endeavor, and no real means of controlling or steering what you create. While players are already finding a few creative workarounds for that problem, the system is disappointing as it stands. It's a way LEGO Fortnite could further separate itself from other survival games, but leaves you waiting for Epic to flesh it out. LEGO Fortnite is a great entry point into survival games, thanks to its cooperative focus, either with friends or helpful NPCs, and its easygoing approach when compared to other, more hardcore games in the genre. The recognizably repetitive grind of climbing the tech tree and growing your village can be quite fun, but right now it feels more like a foundation than a full-fledged game. What's here shows potential, especially with all the possibilities afforded by LEGO's construction elements and the idea of custom-made vehicles, but more needs to be added before LEGO Fortnite feels like a full set. 
For more, check out our reviews of Sonic Dream Team or Fortnite Festival. And for everything else gaming, stick with IGN. <laughs>